So how easy is it or how hard is it to actually work with Storyteller in Unity when you're working on your game? Now I do have the Storyteller project open here and I'll, I'm gonna reload this, go back into the default layout and I'll just launch the project and show you how quickly you can actually create something. But first, let me just talk about the scale of projects you can actually work on. Now, in previous videos, I actually showed you how to work on two projects, two different types of projects due to time constraints, or just two. Um, one is a visual novel type project, and the other one was a 3D um, uh, project called the Detective Bot, where the objective was to interact with various NPCs and solve a little mystery and so that we could accomplish our goal. And there are three full video tutorials on how the entire thing was set up. And for that particular that particular scene there, that 3D scene, you could actually scale that up to be a large open world project if you want, uh, with various NPCs which you can interact with. Now, Storyteller does introduce a new uh, a new workflow because the Storyteller tool itself is a, the pre-production aspect of the content creation so you're creating your characters you're defining your characters you're outlining your story you can even do storyboards and some voiceover in it and then you'd refine that and then have that pushed over into your game using the game bridge which is included with storyteller so that's the pre-production and the production aspect is the game bridge which is included in storyteller also so it gives you two different workflows right there so what I'm going to do now is just create a quick story project, uh, create some dialogue between two characters, and then I'm going to um, send that story off into a package which can be used in-game. Now, if you want to see how that, that, that package is used in-game, then I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check out the, a recent tutorial I did on actually using your content in-game. All right, so let's just get into working with Storyteller right now. So there are three different project types here. There's voice, text, and storyboard. Obviously, if you're working on a game, you're gonna be going for either voice or text. And you can switch between these at runtime, but let's just reload the entire project and just start from scratch. So I'm gonna to go to layout and default. So this is our default layout. And personally, I like to have my windows organized differently. So I like the hierarchy down here, and that's it. So I'm going to go to tool, Diamango, and then storyteller. And there's our storyteller project opened up. Now, what I want to do right here is that I want to select either text or voice. I'm going to go with text and I'm just going to click create. But before I do that, um, you want to make sure that you have a folder selected. So if I select the storyteller folder here and then click create, it's going to create a new story called um, new story in this folder. If I select um, the resources folder, then click create, it's gonna create a story here. So I'm gonna select assets and just click create. And there we go, the product has been created. And the next thing I'm gonna to want to do here is, if you've seen previous videos, if you have not, then um, no worries. This is actually quite easy. So the very first thing you're going to do when you enter the canvas is you're probably going to want to try things like zooming in and out. Um, panning, you're going to probably hold on the alt and uh, drag and move around if you're familiar with other um, assets or tools which use pan and zoom, it, they're the same, most likely the same functions. Now another thing you're probably going to want to do is start clicking around and trying to find out, okay, how can I just get started and create um, my story project or some dialogue and some interactions. Now it's actually quite simple, if you right click, then you get this context. Uh, context window open and from here you can access all the other editor windows or whatever tools you need to access so um, you have the basic stuff you have file save new and exit but we're not going to focus on that too much or any of the other um, uh, functions here you can check those out if you download the free evaluation version you can just go through all of this if you go down to make node you can create nine different types of node we won't be using the abstract node much. So you can create um, nine different types of node, um, but we're not going to want to go into this context menu all the time just to create a node. No, that's not good. So I'm gonna hit control and delete to delete that. Now, if we look at this, it says that a shortcut key for creating nodes is control plus click. 
So if we hold down the control key and we left click, then we get this. So we can just create our nodes anywhere we want to create them. So I want to create a character node here. There we go. There's our character. I want some dialogue. So let's create a dialogue node here and we can just connect this. We can either click on the little uh, input area here or we can click the body of the node to connect it. And we can hit control forward to just push out some new nodes right there. We can also duplicate um, any selected node. So if we selected this, we want to duplicate that. We could by hitting control shift D. Um, however, that's going to mess with the screen recording. So I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to create another character, create a dialogue. I'm going to connect that. I'm going to pop that out there. And there we go. So we're going to have our characters actually say stuff to each other. We're going to say hi. And this character is going to say hello. And we're going to say how are you. And this character is going to say I am fine. And this other character is going to say great. And you, the other character is going to say thank. Thanks. Bye. And that's the dialogue right there. Now, right now, this doesn't make sense. There's no there's no flow to this. We don't know who says what first. And that's where the timeline comes in. So as you can see here, we're just working with two editors right now. We're working with the main one here. And now we're working with the um, the timeline, the storyteller timeline. So I'm just going to go into file here. I'm um, going to go to Windows and then Settings. And here I just want to display this as large, as large and not no, regular, which is the smaller one. We're going to zoom in on the timeline here. And there are our interactions. Now, let's make use of a third editor now, the properties. Now, whichever node you select here, you see information for that particular node. So if we select this node, we see information for this particular node inside the properties. So when we select the node, we see all the information for it. And from here, we can do various things like renaming a node. And if we selected a node that uses text, like a dialog node, we can actually input the text directly into here. So if you have a long text, you'd put it in here and scroll through it because you can't scroll through the text in the node. All right, and this makes it quite useful for organizing our dialogue as we're going to do now, because as I mentioned before, there's no flow to this dialogue at the moment. So we're going to just set that up really quickly. So our character says hi, and then this character says hello. If we select this character, it says, how are you? So it's hi, hello, how are you? And the response is, I'm fine. And then uh, other character responds, great. And then the other character says, thanks, bye. And that's how easy it is to set your interactions. So that's how easy it is to do that, that setup. Now, immediately, we could just take this, put this over into game, have two characters interact um, exactly like this, exactly as you see in the timeline here. Now, this can be as complex or as simple as you want it. And that's really all it takes to actually create this, create your character interactions and create your dialogue. Now, I haven't gone into much detail here because you can actually create voice clips. You can double click here, create voice clips, and you can pop this area open here and um, put in your storyboard image if you want, if you have that. And that's if you're doing storyboarding, but we're not doing that now. So I'm just going to delete that and then close that. We're not using voice clips either, nor are we using any actions here, which illustrate the action that the character takes. Now, you see here, whenever you connect new nodes in the timeline, you see that these get added. Let's go ahead and just delete these. I'm going to shift drag over them, control delete. And as you can tell, the functions are quite simple. Now, I could go into more detail here. For example, if we go into the My Story here and select a character, we can see how our character has over 90 different personality traits. We can give any character multiple voice samples. And we can have multiple evolution states for any character. But that's for if you're, if you're working on a game with a whole lot of detail in it, then you can make it as advanced or as simple as you want. We're just going to go with simple now and just have two simple characters interacting in a very simple way. So I'm going to double click the name area here. I'm going to say character A. And I'm going to call this one character B. 
and I'm going to hit Shift and S to save it or right click File, Save and that saved the project. All right, now, as I mentioned before, we're gonna want this to be um, converted into a format that can actually be used in game. All right, so let's go to our project here. Let's right click, go to create and game bridge and scene data. Now this scene data is gonna take all this information here that we have and put it right into this scene data so that this can be used in game. Simple. All right, so how do we do that? Let's right click and then let's go to uh, window and let's go to game bridge. There we go. Now this is a game bridge window and this is our scene called no name scene. Here it is. It's called no name. If you look up in the upper left here, it's called the no name scene. So if you go ahead and select that, we see our two characters. Now we can push over the sound effect, voice and personality trace if you want. If you're using personality traits, then you're probably going to be wanting to use um, either AI or machine learning or whatever you want to use to actually make use of those personality trait values in determining characters' actions or whatever you want to do with that. But we're not going to be using that now, so I'm just going to just have these two characters selected. And please just uh, make sure you pay attention to these messages. Just going to click push, and that's it. So all of this is now over into our scene data we can actually make use of that in game. For example, if you created an empty object here, sorry, let me just go ahead and open the game bridge again. Let me just, uh, no, I'm just gonna dock it right here. So there we go. Let's add a character component to it. There we go. There's a character component. And if you look in the inspector here, it's asking for the scene data. So we're dragging that scene data. Let's select a character. We can either make this character rep be represented by a character A or B. Let's go character B. And if we click set up, reset up character, it changes the game object CMP character B and all the in information that this um, game object, this character needs is now set up. Once you begin selecting nodes now, we can see all the information relating to those particular nodes that we've selected. So you can see the name of the node you've selected here. That matches the particular character now all of this is we go over all of this in the um, video that's linked in the description below so if you check that out you see how we used another set of characters named character a and b in a very basic tutorial showing how you can set up character interactions where um, we have um, a dialogue and we have camera changing camera changing perspective based on which character is actually speaking so that's it for this video. That's just how easy it is to set up your dialogue. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.